Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at CNC milling some keycaps for a custom macro pad. So here we go. I have the lemon keypad and I CNC milled these keycaps out of some cherry and some walnut. Uh, so today I wanna show you folks how I set up the tool paths in Fusion 360. So let's just jump, jump into the learn guide real quick. So folks, if you wanna uh, make this project, we do have a learn guide. So you can um, use the code, the circuit diagram and the assembly instructions to build your own lemon keypad. It's a great way to support the channel and to support your maker habit. So uh, definitely check it out. I'll have a link in the description. Uh, as for the CNC mill that I'm using, I am using the Bantam Tools desktop CNC. It's a really nice little uh, CNC. Uh, it used to be called Other Mill and now it's uh, Bantam Tools. And really cool about Bantam Tools, they have a really nice uh, speeds and feeds kind of cheat sheet that uh, walks you through um, some of the recommended speeds and feeds for the various tools. And uh, they have two different categories here, some for some mahogany, which is like a hardwood, and some birch plywood, which is more of a soft wood. Uh, so really nice to, uh, to use these as a, as a point of reference uh, for your feeds and speeds. Cool. All right, so having said that, I'll be referencing that. Uh, the Bantam Tools desktop uh, software is really nice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set up, so depending on uh, what stock you have, you're gonna wanna update uh, your dimensions here. So I have a piece of stock. I'm gonna set it to what I have. So it's 110 by 76. And the thickness of this piece of material is uh, 12 millimeters thick. Uh, and then for the placement, I'm using um, the Nitto tape, which is a nice strong adhesive, and it's it's roughly about 0.2 millimeters thick, so that's why I have a Z offset of 0.2 millimeters. If you zoom in here, uh, looking at it from the front side, you can see that there is a tiny bit of gap in between our stock and our spoil bed, so that is nice to see there. But once that's set up, we can go into Fusion 360 and take a look at the model. Uh, so in the design workspace, I have my model already kind of flipped and positioned just to make it a little bit easier. I use the joint to do so. So normally you would see it something like this. So you can use a joint uh, to reposition uh, your model so it's uh, either flipped upright or in a, in a better spot for you when you're setting up your, uh, your tool paths. So with that out of the way, let's go jump into the manufacturing workspace. And the first thing I wanna do is create a new setup for our stock. So right over here in this tab, you got the new setup button. I'll click on that. And the first thing I do is I'm gonna set up my, my stock point of origin. And for the Bantam tools, uh, going back over to it, you'll see that it's actually at the lower left corner here. So the lower left corner is where we wanna set it. And you wanna pick the top of the stock here. The top of the stock is that little dot there. And that's where we want it. Under the stock tab, this is where we can apply we can change the mode from relative size because right now it's just a relative size. I'm gonna change this to the fixed size because we do have a fixed piece of stock that has a very specific uh, dimensions. Uh, so it was 110 by 76 and the thickness of it was uh, 12. Right, so you'll see here that our stock is by default kind of the model position is set to the middle. We wanna change that uh, so that it's in the lower left corner. So I have three of these. Uh, uh, drop downs here that I need to update. So the model position for the X, I'll set that to negative X. And then for the Y, I'll do negative Y. And then for the Z, I'll do negative Z. Uh, so to kind of clear this out, um, for the X side, for the X axis, I'll put zero. But if you look here, it's, it's kind of really, really close. I kind of want a safe zone. So I'm gonna add a little bit of offset here. So I'm gonna change this to two. And I'll do the same for the Y, I'll change that to two. So that will uh, push our model all the way to the lower uh, left corner uh, like we need. And then if we look at it from the front, you notice it's still in the center and that's because that offset's built in there. So I'm gonna remove that offset, clear that out. And now we have our model, the bottom of our model is now the bottom of our stock. So that is how we wanna set it up. And then looking at it here, you can see you can get a good idea of how many you can lay out in this given piece of stock. So I was able to fit uh, three by three, so a total of six keycaps, which is exactly what I need for uh, for this lemon pad, right? So this is a good idea, uh, a good reference point to see uh, how many things you can lay out here. So that's why I have a fixed size box here for my model, for my stock. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna hit okay. And the next thing we need to do is to figure out, all right, so we know we have a good amount of material that we need to kind of shave off in order to get to the thickness of our model. So what I ended up doing was making a face. So I'm gonna click on the face thing here. And this is going to really 
uh, face our entire piece of material to the desired thickness that we want because I want to make multiple keycaps on this piece of stock. So I need to change the tool. So over here under select tool, uh, the Bantam tools has a nice uh, JSON file that has a library of all of their tools. So you can get all their tools that are kind of stock and a really good way to kind of get going. So you can just download that from their website, import it in here, and then there you go. You have all your, your tools. So um, for the Bantam tools, the biggest tool that I can do here that fits this part is the 1 8 inch flat end mill. That's this one here. So I can select that and then just say select. And for the feeds and speeds, this is where you want to reference their website. So depending on what type of wood uh, you have, uh, I was able to get away with uh, the birch plywood stuff. So over here, the uh, the spindle speed is set to 16,400. The cutting rate I set to 1,500. And for the plunge rate is 381. And that's really it for that. Uh, for the geometry, um, looking at the tab, you can see that yellow outline. Outline. This just uh, gives you a visual indicator of what the geometry for this facing operation is. It's really the stock, right? The whole piece of stock that we've defined. That's what we want to. We want to. We want to slim down that whole piece of stock so that it is the desired thickness of our keycap, which is seven millimeters. Under the heights, however, come down here and it's kind of already set up for us. So we need to kind of specify. Uh, the top and the bottom of our operation, and it's kind of already set up for us. So you can see here that the bottom height is actually going to be the top of our model. So that's where it's going to stop. The cut is going to stop right before it gets down here. And the top of our cut is really the top height um, of our stock. So that's that's uh, that's right here, top height, stock top. That's what we, we defined our stock to be 12 millimeters. So that's where it's going to start. Um, and then it's going to stop right before it gets to that model. Um, so then the next thing I want to do is I want to define some, some, uh, some, some multiple uh, step downs. So under the passes, I need to turn that on. So multiple depths, I need to turn that on because our tool, um, I don't want to be too aggressive on this tool, so I'm going to turn that on. And the maximum step down recommended for the 1 8 inch is actually 1.27, but I'm just going to leave it at one millimeter just to be a little bit, um, a little bit uh, not so aggressive, right? So with that, hit OK, and we'll get a visual uh, render of what the uh, what the the job looked like. Now I, for, I I kind of forgot to add one more thing, so let me go back into that so I can either double click on that face or just right click edit. Under passes, I do want to come over here where it says step over. You see where it has like 3.01625. That is the a diameter of our eighth inch tool. And what I found is like, it tends to leave a little bit of excess material behind in between the step over. So I'm gonna make the step over tighter by reducing this number. So I'm gonna put 2.8 and that makes it so that our step over is actually ensuring that it's getting rid of anything in between the step over. So I've made it tighter and that just makes it a little bit finer uh, uh, surface finish, I think. So I'm gonna hit okay and, and then we can um, preview it now. And if we do a simulate, there's a little simulate button here, so I'll click that. And then we got a little playhead arrow here so I can play that. And it will just run through it. I'm gonna increase the speed by um, clicking and dragging on that little slider here. You'll see that it's just doing um, a nice tight um, you know, uh, facing operation. So it's just getting our whole piece of stock uh, to its desired thickness. So that's all we're doing there. And it's gonna step down with a maximum step down of, of a millimeter. So that's really all we're doing here in this operation. We're just setting up our material to get to the desired thickness because we really wanna do multiple keycaps across this piece of material. And here we can start to see our our model, kind of the top of our model shine through there. All right, so I'll hit close. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to apply a 3D adaptive. So I'm going to click 3D adaptive. By default, my 1 8 inch, or the last tool that was selected, is selected here. You could click on select again just to verify. Uh, that's the 1 8 inch. Yes, that's what I want. Hit OK. Um, and then under geometry, I'm not going to select anything just yet for the height. I am going to change something here. Um, we need to specify the top height. The top height of our cut is now not the stock, but the model because we've already we've already faced our material. So now we can tell this adaptive uh, this adaptive clearing that hey, you need to start 
right at the top here of our model. And the bottom here, bottom height, is still our bottom model, so that's set up fine. Under the passes, I'll go ahead and turn off stock to leave, because we want to we want to get to all the stock. And I want to change the maximum roughing step down, or the maximum step down from 10, and bring it back down to one. So with that, I'm just going to hit OK, and this is going to give you a visual uh, of what the adaptive clearing is doing, right? <laughs> it's basically going to mill out everything from the stock except our model. So what this is doing is, is it's, it's looking at the model and it's comparing it to the stock and it's kind of really eating away at all of the stock, which isn't really a good thing that we want for this specific piece of stock. So if we want to make multiple um, versions, multiple cutouts using this piece of stock, we need to define some boundaries. So I'm going to right click on the adaptive, hit edit, and under geometry, there's a little drop down here under the machining boundary. I'm going to switch that from none to selection. And then for the selection, I'm going to come down here and select the inside wall or the inside of the shell here of the keycap. So I'm going to select that. You get a green outline signifying where it is. And then for the tool containment, I'm going to change that from tool outside to the inside because all we're doing here is we're telling, hey, I just want you to focus on all of the geometry that's inside of this selection, right? And that's really all we need to do. So I'll hit OK. And now Fusion's going to recalculate and figure out how many, uh, what's the right path to do um, for that given um, boundary. And you can see here that it has automatically figured out that there is some geometry in the center of this, and it is avoiding that geometry, and it's cutting right where that geometry needs to be. And this is the stem, right? And you take a note that the stem, the height of the stem isn't necessarily flush with the height of the keycap. They actually have different heights. So if you were to use something like a pocket, you wouldn't be able to do that. So that's where the adaptive clearing uh, works here. This is really kind of the best thing. But uh, having a, um, a machining boundary is, uh, optimizes it so it's just focusing on um, the stuff on the inside of the keycap. So that's, that's why I have that set up here. So now with that, I'm going to need to figure out, well, how do I cut out the shape? And because the shape is pretty simple, the outside of the shape, I can just get away with just a 2D contour. So 2D contour, um, I'll select that. Our 1 8 inch tool is what we want to use. And for the geometry, I'll just select the bottom outside of our keycap. And then for the heights, really all I need to change here is, again, the top height of this cut thinks that it's, it's set to the stock, but I need to change that from the stock top to the model stop. So we just need to make that change there. And our bottom height is already set up as our selected contours that we did in the geometry tab. So in the passes tab, all we need to do here is enable ena enable multiple depths and change, uh, actually it's already, set up, it's already set up here. Our maximum roughing step down is one millimeter. Now, when I tried this, I ran into a little bit of an issue where there was there was so much um, pressure being applied that it kind of just knocked my part off of the bed. Um, partly, that, that, that could be because I didn't use enough tape, but I think uh, by reducing this to half of a millimeter, I'm reducing the amount of pressure that's being applied. So hopefully that is a little bit better here. So just making it so it's not so aggressive here. So half of a millimeter seems to work out fine for my multiple depths. So with that, I'll hit OK. And then I can start to uh, simulate this or really just look at the preview here. And you'll see that that's a pretty good clean cut. You can visually see how many times it's going to step down. And that's really it. And then you can see that I have all of this extra um, untouched material here that's perfect for making uh, multiple keys, right? So then the last operation I need to set up is the kind of cavity for creating our little stem, our little cross thing here. So the best uh, operation for this one is just a 2D pocket. So I'll pull that out here under the drop-down 2D pocket. Now for the tool, I can't get a 1 8 inch in here because it's just too big. So I need to get a tool that is not only just uh, within the, you know, the, the boundary here, but also the depth of it. So over here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you folks um, this 132 inch um, end mill has a cutting diameter of uh, half uh, 0.2 inches, which is uh, five millimeters. Uh, so I'm using this one. The stock 
32 inch um, flattened mill is actually three millimeters. So I just changed that um, over here. So under select, um, I have my stock um, 132 inch flattened mill. Let me find that here, this one here. And by default, it has a cutting length of only three millimeters. So it's easy enough to right click, edit, edit the tool, and then you can change um, the, the flute length here and the shoulder length. You'll have to change that from three to five. So I'll put this here, five, and then this one, five, and you'll see that it gets updated here. So that now is set up so that we can actually cut the full length of our stem. So that, that, that's what we need to do there. So I'll hit apply, hit select, and then we'll adjust our feeds and speeds, referencing uh, the feeds and speeds in the documentation. Uh, you can see here that the max depth for the 132 inch is actually a quarter of a millimeter point to five millimeters. Um, so that's what I'll be using here. All right, so back over in Diffusion. Um, under the geometry, all we need to do is select the bottom surface right here. So that bottom surface there. So that's selected. And then under the heights, I'm actually going to do, for the top height, I'm gonna switch this from stock top to a selection. So uh, with this selection, now it wants me to select something. So I'm going to select the top surface of our stem. So basically this is saying, I need this cutting, I need this cut job <laughs> to start right here. Don't start at the top of the model because there's nothing there. If I were to say, you know, top model here, it would start milling air because this stem is actually a little bit for lower down than the top height of this. So that's why you can say here in your top height, you can make a selection here and then just select the top of your surface. Whoops like that. So that's pretty much, oh, okay. And then in back, and then in the passes, we're gonna turn off stock to leave and then multiple depths. Let's turn that on and change this from one millimeter to a 0.25 millimeter. That was what was recommended in the feeds and speed settings. So I'll hit okay. And then I'll get a render here of what it looks like. So there we go. It is going to do a nice clean tool path. I can simulate it now. You can see that a ramp up to it. Oh, that's too fast. Let me slow that down. Hit play again. You see that it comes down, starts that uh, that helical thing. And you can see here that maybe it's starting too, too high. We could reduce that because it's got a really tall clearance, um, but it no, it, but it's not too bad here. And the, uh, the tool path is nice and concentric, really optimized, and it'll actually keep the tool down, which is nice. Uh, previously, I tried using an adaptive clearing, and that would just kind of retract every single after every single kind of uh, step down. So it's nice that this keeps the tool down. So the pocket, the 2D pocket is definitely the right, um, the right tool strategy for this, for this particular geometry. All right. And that's pretty much it for setting up the tool paths. At this point, we can export these out or post them out and bring them into the Bantam tool software and set them up and see how that works. So once these are set up, um, I, I thought about how should I export these out? And I'm a fan of kind of exporting out individual G codes um, so that I can kind of take some time in between the, the operations to clean it up. So really, I, I like to export the, uh, the facing operation as a standalone G code. So right click, post process, make sure that the, uh, the other mill, if that's what you're using, is selected. There's a bunch of other machines. <laughs> but I'll check, uh, I'll, I'll use the other mill, which is the Bantam tools right now and hit okay. Navigate to where you want to save it. And I like to name my stuff with like the tool in the beginning. So like one eighth and then face or, or, or I'll put LBL for, you know, LXL for my, <laughs> for my name here. And then uh, I'll, I'll call it the face. And then also why not add like 12 millimeters as a way to define, to specify the thickness of the material um, that I'm starting with. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'll just replace that because I already exported these out. And then in the Bantam tools, I'll bring in that face over here under file, open file, bring that out, select our file. And then from this drop down, you need to select the one eighth inch tool. And then you can use, you can toggle between the different um, previews here to kind of see the, the paths. This is a great way to visualize, like, is that the right path? Yes, that looks about right. So that is what our material, or that is what the face will look like once we're done. It'll just make our material seven millimeters uh, thick. All right, so then back over to Fusion. Um, the adaptive clearing and the contour, I kind of want to export these out together. So once the face is done, 
there's going to be a lot of material in the other mill that I'm going to want to clean up. So that's why I exported this out as a standalone G-code file so that the tool can kind of rest and I can have a moment to clean up uh, all the stuff inside. So with that, um, I'm going to hold down Shift and, and multi-select both of these two, the adaptive and the contour, and I'm going to right click and say post process. That way I can export both of these uh, strategies, these tool cuts, um, at the, with the same G-code, all in one file here. So uh, I'll navigate to the right spot and then name it uh, the 1 8 inch keycap, just like that, and hit replace. Okay, and then the last bit, the 132 inch right here, with that selected right click, post process, same thing, other mill is selected, hit okay, navigate to the place you wanna save it, and then I'll go ahead and rename it to something like this. 132 LXL keycap.gcode. So let's save this out. So now that those are all exported, I can go back into the Bantam Tool software and bring them in. So the first one, the second one rather, I'll bring in is the 1 8 inch LXL keycap. Bring that in. I need to specify the tool under the drop down, select the 1 8 inch flattened mill, and there it is. Looking really nice. Cuts all the way through. Cool, and then the last thing to bring in is open file, the 132 inch. Again, under the dropdown, 132 inch is what I'll select, and there it is. Notice that the, um, the keycap is not on the edge of our spoil board, and that's because we specified that two millimeter offset. So that's, that's why we set that up there. So what's cool about this Bantam Tool software is you can add multiple copies of the same G-code. So if you wanted to do a pattern, or if you want to make multiple copies here, we can bring in uh, those files again, and then use the placement here under the drop-down placement. You can add something like 34, and then let's go ahead and select the 1 8 inch flattened mill, and it shows up right next to it. You just have to um, be wary of where your 132 inch is, because they are two G codes that I have to bring in here to make one keycap. So right here, 132 inch, just make sure that these two have the same Z or, or, or Y um, offsets. So if you're gonna make this one 34, just make sure that the 32 is also 34 like that. And uh, that's how I was able to make uh, multiple copies all in this one piece, of, uh, one piece of stock material. So that is how I set this up. Um, I got lots of other ideas for making some different um, uh, shaped keycaps, but uh, let me know what you folks think. Um, don't forget, if you want to pick up anything from the Adafruit shop, you can always get a discount code on Wednesdays uh, for, for Ask an Engineer that happens at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll have a link to the description um, in the description of all of the playlists that we have so you can check out all of the different Laravel layers that we have. But that's going to do it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.